Hey guys, I want to talk to you about a game that I love and it's a game called Elite Dangerous. And I know what you're thinking, you're already here and you're like, ah, uh, I gotta watch a video about a video game that I've never heard of before and it sounds really nerdy because it's some space shit and uh, you know, I don't have time for that, I really don't. I don't know what happened, how I ended up on this page, but uh, here I am. Uh, watching this video by this dude named uh, Bunty King. Apparently he's a video games expert or something like that. I don't know who he is, but uh, here I am watching this video on Elite Dangerous and here's this fucking nerd who's just like, Oh, uh -huh. do you want to play Elite Dangerous with me? Uh, excuse me. I want to talk to you about a game called Elite Dangerous. It's a game about space, and you go out into space, and it's so crazy. It's it's insane. You you have to see it. You I'll show you my hotas. My it's my hands-on system. It's so cool. And you're probably like, holy shit, this is uh really intense. I did not have a nerd in my face uh, all day. I've been just dealing with alpha chads in my uh, corporate uh, boardroom sick meetings. And yeah, all of a sudden here I am, I have to watch this guy pitch me on a game called Elite Dangerous. Well, you know what, dude? You're gonna sit down and you're gonna listen to me and you're gonna watch a video about the sickest space simulation I have ever played in my life. First time I heard about Elite Dangerous, I was like, Elite Dangerous? What a dumb name. <laughs> and I feel so bad saying that now because I love this game and like, obviously it's a story that I wouldn't probably lead with if I was ever talking to the developers. Like, hey, by the way, I thought your, your name was dumb. Elite Dangerous? What a f***ing nerd. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy, you know, like talking about it, trying to talk about it with people that are just like normal, that don't play games. I'm like, yeah, it's a game called Elite Dangerous. Uh, you fly around in space and uh, you see cool shit and all they see is that guy that you just saw is this dude that's like, oh, Mr. please talk. <laughs> It's so crazy. It's a hard game to pitch people on. It really, really is. But look, guys, this is a beautiful, breathtaking space simulation that I can find myself losing hours in. And uh, it's one that I want to talk about on this channel. But before I do, I wanted to kind of make sure that you guys had a bit of an introductory piece on it so that you could watch something a little light and uh, figure out if it's a game you feel is worth investing in. And if there's one thing that I absolutely do love doing, it's definitely pitching people on the games that I love because I don't want to just enjoy them alone. I wanna enjoy them with people. This is a sick game, and I want other people to play this sick game with me. Essentially, if I value something, I wanna share it with people. And let me tell you something, Elite Dangerous is a game that I truly do value. It's just a mesmerizing experience, no matter what path you choose to take. The only thing you'll have to get past is the learning curve, which is incredibly steep. Uh, and it's not just a game that you can pick up and play uh, in two hours and just be doing whatever you wanna do. It requires a time investment that is higher than most games. Even at 200 hours, I'm still learning things about the game because it's just that deep of a game. <laughs> get a lot of this guy. It only took me 75 hours to get good at the game. <laughs> he sucks. The thing is, 200 hours is just a drop in the pond when compared to the average core elite player's game time. Anyone that's playing Elite Dangerous right now at a higher level has at least a thousand hours. You know, I'm the uh, outlier, only 200 hours, and I'm the best. <laughs> but the general rule is a thousand hours, at least, I think. 
But yeah, 200 hours in Elite is uh, very cute, uh, and uh, I'm not gonna stand here and tell you I know everything about the game, but I do feel confident enough about it to talk about the game systems in a, a multi-video format. So if you stick around, we're gonna jump into stuff like deep core mining, which is one of my favorite activities in the game. I fucking love deep core mining. It is just a fun, fun time. We could also get into some fights, and I'm sure there's so much more that, uh, that can come out of this. I'm just really looking forward to sharing more of this game with you guys. Now, after you've watched this video, if you're interested, interested in diving into the game and learning everything about it, I recommend checking out ED Tutorials by Exegius and Down to Earth Astronomy. These two channels are one of many in the elite community that are just great, but these specifically are the ones that I found to be super helpful in terms of providing me the information I needed to feel more confident playing Elite. All of them have a variety of videos, uh, but I find that Exegius uh, has a focus on PvP, which is super crucial if you want to play Elite in the most exciting way. You should also know that at the beginning of next year, the game is set to receive an expansion called Odyssey. This is the first time Elite players are going to be able to put both feet on the ground when landing on planets or stations, uh, so it's really going to expand the combat and exploration aspects of the game. And uh, I'm telling you, right now is the perfect time to get into Elite Dangerous. As mentioned earlier, Elite Dangerous is a space sim and it's an old established IP in the genre. I mean, the first game came out in 1984, so we're looking at over three decades of Elite being around and that is very cool to see. I just love seeing developers care enough about their IPs to invest over three decades worth of time in them and show no signs of stopping. What really sets Elite Dangerous apart from other titles in the genre like Star Citizen or EVE Online is that it is a one-to-one -one recreation of our galaxy. What that means is you can go anywhere in the galaxy. All you have to do is pick a system, plot a route, and the rest is up to you. Most players tend to stick around the bubble, which is a term for the player inhabited area where all the factions are present and all kinds of crazy shit can happen. For example, one time I was playing on stream and I had just mined a whole bunch of low temperature diamonds. My cargo hold was full of them. These are essentially just really expensive space rocks that got me to my first billion credits in game. By the way, you'll learn that mining is the fastest fastest way to make money in Elite, and I'll talk a little bit more about it later on in this video. Anyway, Cargo Hold is full of these diamonds, and I was gonna drop them off at a station for a mill a pop. I'm telling you, man, the money was right there. I saw it, I saw it, and I got intercepted by another player who was a fucking pirate. And this guy stole a substantial amount from my fucking Cargo Hold. I had to settle for less because of this fucking rat pirate. Crazy. Prior to Elite Dangerous, I had never been robbed in a game before, so that was a really cool experience, getting robbed in a game. Now, I know that some people would hate this experience. They'd be like, oh my god, I don't ever have to deal with that. I just want to like do my thing and then just like not have to worry about anybody else. Which is why you have options for open play, private play, and solo play. Which all kind of sounds sexual, but there's nothing sexual about space. In fact, you will also learn that you have to reattain virginity to play this game. In open, you can run into anybody. In private, you can only run into the people that you choose to play with and in solo you're all alone so essentially you can just completely avoid experiences like my own uh, where someone told me they were going to murder me unless i gave them a significant portion of my haul also the economy and galaxy remain persistent across different forms of play so you don't have to worry about missing out if you're playing private or solo but look don't be a baby and just jump into open just do it just just do it trust me just do it you think i didn't write that pirate's name down you think i'm not going to absolutely space this dude in my crate mark ii do you think that i haven't been plotting his death on my pilgrimage to the galactic center the truth is i completely forgot his name because i'm a billionaire now and i don't care if some peasant stole from me he's probably still depressed and floating around in space looking to rob more honorable workers like me. Okay, but guys, for real, this game is beautiful and amazing and I love everything about it. From warping into a new system to dropping into an asteroid belt to popping open an asteroid to docking in a busy station to evading pirates to scanning an undiscovered Earth-like world in the middle of deep space to barely missing a planet while traveling at speeds faster than you can imagine, all of it is amazing and sounds amazing. Deployment, 
There's a bunch of things to do in Elite Dangerous. You could adopt a more violent approach and literally melt people as a bounty hunter or pirate, or you could adopt a more non-violent approach and haul goods or transfer information or provide passenger flights to various passengers of various kinds, especially really rich ones that want you to do really crazy things or bring you to specific destinations. You could also go exploring and you can also do one of my favorite activities, which is deep core mining, which is what netted me my first billion in game. And if Elite was real, would be the best job ever. Deep core mining is essentially blowing up asteroids around ring planets with seismic warheads. It's f***ing crazy. I could make a whole video on deep core mining, but to put it briefly, what I would do is I would drop into an asteroid belt, scan asteroids until I found a suitable asteroid, probed the suitable asteroid. Then I would put seismic warheads into fissures on its surface. And once I determined that it had an optimal yield, I would back up two clicks and I would watch it blow up again and again and again, and it was amazing. After popping open an asteroid, I'd fly into its core and then use this thing called an abrasion blaster to rip off chunks of diamonds off of its insides. Then I'd use these useless pieces of shit called collector limpets to scoop up all of the loosened chunks of space rock and bring them directly to my cargo scoop. These things constantly malfunction and collide into chunks of space rock all the time. They are totally a meme. One time, one of these limpets failed while traveling at full speed towards my windshield. When it died, it sent the rock it was carrying directly into my windshield and who had to cover that cost? I did. Not the company that made the limpets, I had to cover the cost. It's amazing because we're in the future and we're able to warp from system to system and miraculously end up in a new ship after being melted in your previous one and for some reason we still haven't figured out how to give these useless drones proper pathing but i do digress this game is so much fun and any complaints i have about it are just purely fun in nature this has been a real treat to experience this time around and what i mean by this time around is that the first time i bought elite dangerous was in 26 either late 2016 or early 2017 and i was playing with a controller so it just wasn't fun in an effort to make the game more fun and playable for me i went on amazon and ended up buying a logitech extreme 3d pro but by the time it got in i was already dealing with some emotional stuff and i was way too lazy to work the 3728 different keybinds to get it to work effectively. Flash forward to 2020, it's fucking COVID. I'm having a depressing year. I'm all alone and I look and I see this flight stick collecting dust and I'm just like, Fuck it, we're playing Elite. And what a great decision that was. The only way to really play Elite is with a flight stick or preferably a hands-on throttle and stick, also pronounced Khotas. I would also say it's not viable to play with a mouse and keyboard or a controller, really. Uh, at the end of the day, you are going to get absolutely shit on by someone using a hotas. A good hotas can cost you anywhere between the $200 and $1,000 range, but no matter how cheap you get them, they will definitely cost you your sex life. But if you wanna dip your toes into the vacuum of space, I don't know why you'd wanna do that, but if you do, uh, and you don't want to break the bank, you can always get this guy. This here is the Extreme 3D Pro, and it's one of the cheaper virgin totems on the market. It makes the game more enjoyable, and it's the perfect way to see if you like the game or not. And so even though I think Elite Dangerous is an amazing game, and it is an amazing game, I find that a lot of people are sleeping on it, and I feel like I know some of the reasons why. One being that it's a niche game marketed towards adults, and it has a steep learning curve. Another being that it's just not a hype game like Fortnite or Call of Duty, and it has a negligible Twitch viewership. And another reason why I don't think it's uh, that popular is because it's just not a game that's easy to pick up and play with a controller. You're just not going to be playing at a higher level with a controller. And that is the mainstream choice, a controller. If you do want to play the game at a higher level, you will eventually need to buy a Hotas, which is exactly what I did. I finally bought a Logitech X52 Pro, which is a mid-tier Hotas, and it has absolutely changed the way I play the game. What are you doing? Well, I'm just playing with my Hotas. <laughs> It's uh, it's pretty cool. You should try it. Oh, you want to try it out? No, that's some greasy gamer shit. I mean, I'm suddenly capable of doing crazy things like getting dangerously close to planets at high speeds and coming to a full stop. It's truly thrilling. Currently, and I'm not sure if you caught it, I alluded to it earlier, but I am in the galactic center and I'm out exploring, but I really look forward to getting back to the bubble and jumping into combat missions, you know, lose a little and learn a lot. So just to close up, Elite will be a game for you if you're looking for amazing, involved, atmospheric, freeform gameplay in an MMO setting. What you do in Elite is up to 
to you and it will reward you if you are patient and willing to make mistakes. I haven't had a ton of experience with the community, but I found it to be awesome thus far. I found that people are pretty chatty and helpful and it's always nice to see people at these busy stations or in the less populated parts of space. There are some things I wish it had that a space MMO like EVE Online has, which is uh, player owned corporations that can affect the economy and factional PVP warfare at a larger scale, but that's just me. Overall though, and as I'm sure you can tell, I am in love with this game. It really made all the difference uh, as I went through hard times this year. It allowed me to focus on the beauty and scale of the universe and find some value in isolation and being alone with my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you tried this game out and I hope to see you in the stars. Stay tuned for more content around Elite Dangerous and just more content in general. Thanks for watching. Collect a limpet expired.